Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for this Thursday in the season of Advent. Today is de- December 3rd, 2020. I am Pastor Albert from St. Mark's in Springfield, Virginia. It's good to have you with us. Our bulletin is on our website at stmarks-elca.org. That's stmarks-elca.org. Let us begin. The Spirit and the Church cry out, Amen, come, Lord Jesus. All those who await his appearance pray, Amen, come, Lord Jesus. The whole creation pleads, Amen, come, Lord Jesus. Continue with the thanksgiving for light. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. In that day the mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and the hills shall flow with milk and honey. Alleluia. Mm-hmm. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. We continue with our readings for this night. Our first reading is from Zechariah, the 13th chapter, beginning at the first verse. On that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. On that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will cut off the names of the idols from the land, so that they shall be remembered no more. And also I will remove from the land the prophets and the unclean spirit. And if any prophets appear again, their fathers and mothers who bore them will say to them, You shall not live, for you speak lies in the name of the Lord. And their fathers and their mothers who bore them shall pierce them through when they prophesy. On that day the prophets will be ashamed, every one, of their visions when they prophesy. They will not put on a hairy mantle in order to deceive, but each of them will say, I am no prophet, I am a tiller of the soil, for the land has been my possession since my youth. And if anyone asks them, What are these wounds on your chest? The answer will be, The wounds I received in the house of my friends. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, Against the man who is my associate, says the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd, that the sheep may be scattered. I will turn my hand against the little ones. In the whole land, says the Lord, two-thirds shall be cut off and perish, and one-third shall be left alive. And I will put this third into the fire, refine them as one refined silver, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people, and they will say, the Lord is our God. Our psalm is Psalm 80, beginning at the first verse. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears, and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. 
Let your face shine, that we may be saved. Verse 17. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. And a reading from the book of Revelation, the fourteenth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. Then I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Then another angel, a second, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then another angel, a third, followed them, crying with a loud voice, Those who worship the beast and the image and receive a mark on their foreheads or on their hands, they will also drink the wine of God's wrath, poured unmixed into the cup of his anger and they will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image, and for anyone who receives the mark of its name. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and hold fast to the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Blessed are the dead, who from now on die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. This ends our readings. We read many ver- many verses tonight, but words of comfort and hope come right there in that very last verse from Revelation, chapter 14, verse 13. Write this. Blessed are the dead who from now on die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit. They will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Blessed are the dead who from now on die in the Lord. They will rest from their labors. They will rest. Rest. May the Lord grant us peace. May the Lord bring us to a place of comfort. May the Lord grant us rest. And all the chaos, all the, the distractions of the world, all the pain and suffering around us, the turmoil even within our own hearts, our families, our homes, our nation and world, or, torn apart and turned upside down by this pandemic. And we hear these words of hope. And not just for the living, but for all of us. These are words of hope for the living as they reflect on our time of departure from this earth. Blessed are the dead who from now on die in the Lord. They will rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. They will rest from their labors. God calls us to act. God does not call us to idle lives, but acts of service. Even if we are in isolation or even quarantine in our apartments and our homes, there are, there are opportunities, ways for us to act. Pick up the phone, send an email, write a text to a family member, a friend, a neighbor, Bring words of hope and comfort. Check in. Just see how someone is doing. These are your labors, my friend. Maybe you are able-bodied and able to get out of the house and, and you're going shopping. You can stop and pick up something for a neighbor. You can ask, ask the, the, the young mother or the, or the aging neighbor if they can use some assistance. These are your labors. These are the deeds that follow you into the eternal dwelling place that God has prepared for you. So, my friends, we labor and we toil on this side of heaven. 
but a time is coming when these words will ring true for us. Blessed are the dead who from now on die in the Lord. They will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. I'm certainly not looking to rush it. I'm only in my 40s, and I hope to live at least another 40 more years. And when that time comes, I'll probably want to live another 15 or 20. But these words bring me hope. For these are words for me, they're words for you. Blessed are the dead who from now on die in the Lord. They will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Fear not, Mary, you have found favor with the Lord. Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Alleluia. My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord. I sing my Savior's praise. You looked upon my lowliness, and I am full of grace. Now every land and every age this blessing shall proclaim. Great wonders you have done for me, and holy is your name. To all who live in holy fear, your mercy ever flows. With mighty arm you dash the proud, their scheming hearts expose. The ruthless you have cast aside, the lowly throned instead. The hungry filled with all good things, the rich sent off unfed. To Israel, your servant blessed, your help is ever sure. The promise to our parents made, their children will secure. Sing glory to the Holy One, give honor to the Word. And praise the power of the Most High, one God by all adored. Fear not, Mary, you have found favor with the Lord. Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the prayers. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us. For those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel. For those who are sick and suffering. And for those who are in captivity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, by the advent of whose Son into the world, the kingdom of heaven is open to all who believe in him. Grant us your Holy Spirit, so that we may believe in him with our whole heart, and so serve him in our daily lives, that when he comes again to make up his jewels, we may, by your mercy, be gathered into the kingdom which abides eternal in the heavens. Through your mercy, O our God, who lives and reigns one God, world without end. Amen. Lord, make us bold to pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We look forward to seeing you in the morning for morning prayer. Good night.